Well, this is exciting. More boards this time with Dr. Yeah. Eddie. Hello. <laughs> Let's hit it. Okay. Sarcoidosis, common test to run. I'm thinking something in the lungs. Yeah. Do we need an x-ray? That's a good choice. Good is that choice. the one? Yeah. Let, well, I mean, what else? You could run some blood work. Oh, you're going to quiz me on this. Oh, I don't know what blood work I want. What would I do for this? Uh, Starts I, with an A. A and A? Oh, no close. But... <laughs> We're off to a rough start. I am. How about an ace? Oh, ace. There you go. Oh, hey! Yes, Good. Okay. got it. All right, we're off Serum to... lysis enzyme is another one. Less common. A lot is sensitive. So yeah. there you go. But was I wrong about the chest x-ray? Absolutely right. You were correct. Okay, got it. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Lyme disease testing. All right, so I'm thinking I went in the woods. I got a bullseye rash. Can't you just test blood work that tests for Lyme? There's a specific... Yeah. There's an antibody. Lime antibody? Sure. Is that going to be the answer? Is it that easy? Uh, let's see. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Eliza. So this is an option. I will say, you know, in a Lyme case, a lot of the times they just treat it empirically. Okay. So if you, especially if you have a known history of the tick bite uh, or you've been in an endemic area, uh -huh. they'll just give you some doxycycline. And magically, if it gets better, there's your answer. <laughs> that would be magical. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, TB test. Yeah. No, okay. but this is just the skin. Tuber There's a few. Tuberculin skin test. There's a few. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one of them. <sighs> There's the, more? There's now some blood tests. Yes. So now there is the uh, TB spot and the quantiferin gold. Oh, that gold. is the one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Or the PPD in the skin. There you go. It. It's, just, it's there. It's right there. Quantiferin gold. So that's more common now or that's like the gold standard? Uh, You know, I will say it's probably more often done because it's just one test. Take your blood and you're done. You don't need to come back for a return visit to get your um, PPD read. I love it. All right. Ooh. Topical steroid drops taper is a common treatment of any uveitis to lower inflammation. Mm. What do cycloplegics do? What do they do? Well, this is painful, right? It can be. And I think that my thought, you have the ciliary body, yeah. you have accommodation, you sure. have pupil getting There's big and small. spasming in there. Is yeah. that what we're stopping? That just... is one of the main ones. Uh, so ciliary body spasm, so it helps okay. the pain. Uh, it also can help secure the blood aqueous barrier. So oh, less I didn't think about that of one. Inflammatory material. Wait, because there's blood vessels in the iris, and so sure we're just thing. like fixing them. Yep. I like that. And uh, uh, even one more is that when you pull the iris back a little bit away from the front of the lens, you reduce the risk of posterior sneakye. I love those Three answers. Jobs in oh, one. wow. Controlled pain. Prevention of sneakye. And I think your third one was a perfect one to add on. I think. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. Love it. Oh. This, I think I know it, and I think they know it too, and I think you know it. Isn't syphilis the great masquerader? Uh, or is it something different? I don't know. <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know what this slide is. I mean, syphilis is the great masquerader. There's a lot of things that kind of can look like a uveitis that aren't truly a uveitis, an inflammation of the uveal tract. So I don't know what the slide is asking. Let's find out. Okay. There you go. Okay. We got it. We got it. We're going great. All right. Uh, oh, checkpoint. I say we need some more. Okay. Name this uveitic systemic cause common in children 5 to 16 years old, joint pain and arthritis. Yeah. Young girls, especially. Was it just juvenile idiopathic, idiopathic arthritis. arthritis? That's the one. I'm thinking also just cornea. Yeah. Band keratopathy. Can get it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's an interesting one. That, yeah. I think, is an important one. Uveitis in a kid, JIA, until proven otherwise. Is this the same thing as, can you say juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, or is that... It, that name is not preferred anymore because they're actually rheumatoid factor negative. Ah, so they changed the name on us. Yeah. I'm learning. I like yeah. this. Okay. Oh, what am I even looking at right now? <laughs> Oligoarticular J-I-A-V-S? This is J-I-A. I don't know. Versus? Versus. That's what it's supposed to say. Oh. Versus polyarticular. <laughs> okay. So uh, oligo versus poly. Like how many joints are involved? Which one gets the uveitis? I, I, have I forgot no. which one. So the J, the J that causes uveitis usually has arthritis in the, I forgot. It's the hand joints. Oh, oh, like this. Does this help? Oligo four and below. Joints involved. I mean, that's how many joints are involved. I don't like this question. It's yeah, okay. We don't like it. Moving yeah. on. We're done. Okay. True or false? MS can r rarely 
be associated to anterior uveitis. The way it's worded makes me feel like that's true. Like there's a small chance of MS, but I don't hear about that very often. So part of me wants to say false mm, also. I don't know which way this is going to go, because I would say if MS is going to cause a type of uveitis, it's actually more likely to cause a vitritis. Yeah. Rather uh, than anterior uveitis. So let's see what it says. Oh, well, true. All right, sure. Rarely. <laughs> okay, got it. Oh, Kawasaki disease versus... VKH, I think, is Voigt, Koyanagi, Harada. Yes. What's the question, though? <laughs> can cause uveitis? We agree. Uh, VKH, definitely. Kawasaki. What is Kawasaki disease? I think I'm struggling with this one. What's this VK... called? Oh. Disease causes swelling. I think yeah. that one causes scleritis, does it not? That feels... VKH causes uveitis, definitely, including post Yeah, that's what I feel Kawasaki, like. Kawasaki, I don't know. Okay, Kawasaki is a big question mark yeah. there. Yeah, okay. Diffuse uh -huh. stellate KPs. I don't even know what it's really asking here. Uh, KPs, keratic precipitates. Yeah. There's diffuse stellate. Is this a specific thing that we think causes that? This is, uh, I think that's probably what they're asking. I don't know. I'm, I don't know why I'm thinking herpetic. Um, no. Not. And I'm blanking on the name of it either. Hang on, wait. That's the oh, one. I should have waited yeah. a second longer. You should have, because I was going to get it. Fuchs, heterochromic <laughs> iridocyclitis. At least. <laughs> okay. Oh, an aural triangle. Oh, this is fun. Wait, it's just telling us about it, though. It's not really a question. Yeah. The inferior portion of cornea endothelium shows granulomatous uveitis. Yes. Maybe why do we get an aural triangle? Is this convection current? This sure is, yeah. Is it really? Yeah, so the aqueous moves through this... the anterior chamber, and so everything kind of settles out on the anterior, oh. or sorry, on the posterior cornea. The same as the a Krugenberg spindle. Exactly Pigment. the same. I actually... Same, uh, I same love that. process. All right, explanation, wedge-shaped region. Love it. Hold up, hold up. Oh. Granulomatous uveitis. What are we talking about? Oh, mutton fat. Oh, because they're talking about mutton fat KPs. Okay, we're we still go. okay? Yeah, that's good. All right. Good slide. Oh, uh, mm. well, we just talked about the triangle. So Arlt's triangle is the KP. Yeah. I don't know what Arlt's line is. A line? Mm, is it a line? No, that's a Kutadus line, like graft rejection. What's an Arlt's line? Oh. Oh. Trachoma. Totally different. That's a curveball oh, at us. Field. <laughs> wow. But good to remember. Okay, so Arlt is a okay. very famous person that got his name for two different things. How lucky. <laughs> Oh, Ooh. I think I know this, but I don't know the specific numbers. Is so this... sun is the standardization of uveitis nomenclature. So okay. how many cells makes what grade of cells in the anterior chamber in and that? This is why we do one by one. One by one, yep. What is it? Zero to five is one plus. Five to 20, 20 to 50, 50 to a million. Let's pull up the, let's pull up the table <laughs> okay. instead of making me say the numbers. <laughs> there they are. That, I think, is very relevant. So I've never... Ooh, this is interesting. I've not seen this mnemonic before, so maybe this oh. is something I'm going to have to pay attention to myself. Oh, Grade one coins. Dime, about 10, 10, 20, 5, 50, 75 cents. Okay. You're going right. to use that? Valid? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, let's go with it. I found a good mnemonic. Close enough. Well done. Oh, now it's going to quiz us on each one. What? I can't remember what I just saw on the previous slide. <laughs> uh, didn't it say 6 it to 15? It said dime, so about 10. But five. it wasn't on that one. I think it was 6 to 15. Oh, dang it. There it is again. All right. About 10. I'm guessing the next question is going to be grade 2, so let's study really quick. 25. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got it. I'm guessing the next question is going to be grade 3. 26 to 50? Oh, wait, oh, checkpoint. You know we what? We would have gotten it right. We'll just get it later. Good job, guys. Great work.